Hello everybody, Wixel here. The new endgame monument in Ross has been added. In today's video, we're going to be examining the monument's layout, loot, enemies, utilities, features, and the new laptop that has been added in the bunker. Timer on it is currently linked to the server's wipe, and once this reaches the 24 hour mark, it triggers some certain events on the server. But we're gonna get into those later on in the video. I hope you stick around and enjoy, this is gonna be a good one. When in search of the missile solar, you can expect to find it in the tempered and desert biomes, featuring a unique layout. Unlike any other randomly generated monument, this monument feels refreshing due to it being handcrafted. On the outside you will find several smaller buildings and a large climbable radio tower, three overwatch towers, a lock side door uses one of the X's for the monument and of course the missile silo itself. To open the entrance on the monument you are going to need a blue card. Enter the small green building next to the radio tower and swipe your key card and press the button beside it. The hatch will begin to open. It will take 20 seconds to open and another 20 to shut. Once you've entered the hatch, the only way to leave is by completing the monument. You can do this by going out the back entrance. To be able to go out the back entrance, you will need to open it by going into the side room and pressing the red button. When in the missile silo, you can find a total of 6 levels, each being accessible by either using the elevator or going up and down the stairs. Scaring the surface of the monument, you'll be able to find a total of 10 military and regular crates throughout the military brackets and the small green buildings. Below the surface, you can expect to find 22 crates scattered throughout the monument. Within the starting area, you'll find 11 crates, 1 within the silo, 4 in the office, four in the living quarters, and one within the computer room. And finally, you'll find the elite crate within the bunker. Additionally, within the bunker, you'll find three diesel barrels alongside the elite crate, as well as a red key card next to the laptop. Above ground, you'll have four blue scientists patrolling the area. They have 150 HP and carry a similar loot table to that you can find on the Arctic Cargo Excavator Military Base Oil Rig and Patrol Scientists. Below ground, you can find up to 23 new night vision equipped scientists roaming the monument. They can either carry an LR300 or a Spaz-12. These scientists are a lot harder to kill than the ones you'll find above ground, due to them having double the health. They are just as strong as the heavy scientists found on oil rig. To be able to kill the scientists, you will need to shoot them in the head at least 6 times with a hunting bow, 3 times with a fully charged compound bow, 7 times with a revolver, 6 shots from a semi-automatic, 5 shots from an AK. With the addition of flashbangs to the game, you can now blind the scientists using them. The underground scientists are more susceptible to the effects of the flashbang due to their night vision goggles. This gives you a short amount of time to either run away or finish them off with a few shots to the head. Here is a quick run through of me collecting all of the loot available within the monument. When exiting the underground, there is a side room where you can find a computer station. From the computer station, you can monitor the CCTV cameras at the monument. The cameras both show you key points on the monument. I'd recommend checking this before you leave. With all of the loot that you've just obtained, this could save you from being jumped by another player. You can also view these cameras remotely. All you need is the camera codes that I've put into the description of this video in your own computer station. I suggest checking these cameras before you arrive to monument to see if somebody is currently there. 
The monument is surrounded by radiation both outside and inside. To avoid taking damage in certain areas outside, you will at least need 10 radiation protection. However, other areas outside, as well as their all underground areas, need you to at least be wearing 25 rad protection. If you don't want to take any damage, this makes PvP at the monument extremely interesting to say the least, because you can't wear a full metal kit without taking rad damage. A good way to negate the rads is by drinking teas. I've already made a tea guide, and this is on my channel already. I recommend checking it out if PvPing is something that you'll be doing at this monument. There is also a chance that another entrance can be found outside the missile silo compound. This can connect to the underground train network, allowing you to quickly get in and out of this monument when needed. Inside the bunker room, there is a laptop with a countdown that's ticking away to the end of life. On the laptop, there is also a cool easter egg that reveals what the name Rust really means. Population Unit Survival Test. It's cool to see Rust expanding on the lawnmower. Hopefully they will continue to do this in the future. Once the laptop reaches below the 24 hour mark, the NPC activity on the map increases. For instance, Bradley leaves the launch site and starts to patrol on the roads, looking for unsuspecting players. The fighter jets can also be seen patrolling the skies, but at this moment they are just there for show. Maybe sometime in the future we can see them turn into something new and found this video helpful. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you all have a good one.